He's a restauranter, an artist, a former actor. Please welcome back to the studio, Mr. Chow. Yay! Yay! As an artist, M. As an artist, M. Um, let's go to why you're actually in Dubai right now. You launched it uh, yesterday. Sotheby's Dubai will be holding an exhibition of Mr. Chow's art, yeah. who has gone back to painting after a 50-year break. Well, I, I started painting in 19... Uh, 60, uh, 50, uh, 56. Okay. Wow. And I painted religiously for 10 years and I went to St. Martin's School. I brought up in London, right? Yeah. Oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so I then then I took a long sabbatical and I happened to to create Mr. Chow. The reason for that is to, to bridge East and West and to have respect for China and everything. Sure. So I made the restaurant into theater. And basically, uh, and find great success with that. Um, so it's like a passion, you know. It's a journey, and also, I was uplifted from Shanghai, and landed in England in the in nineteen long time fifty two <laughs> on on the day that uh, London had a fog that killed eighteen thousand people. Oh Remember gosh. those days with uh, Winston Churchill still uh, sure. in power and so on. So, so. So it's like kind of uh, unbelievable, lost everything, you know. So I re, re, re-established, I always wanted to re-establish the Chinese culture, Chinese people, um, and my father and my family. So I, through the medium of a restaurant, you see, I always want, I wanted to follow my father's footsteps, which is in the theater. Mm-hmm. So of course that dream came to an end. So my creatives changed to painting. And then I had a long radical sabbatical, and then finally, 11 years ago, I returned to painting, and I've been painting like a vengeance, and I'd had this good opportunity here. Of course. With Sotheby, very grateful for Sotheby taking me on at the selling show, mm-hmm. <laughs> selling mm-hmm. exhibition. Basically, it's work on paper and also uh, painting, painting, literally painting, yeah. And I was gonna. Okay, so you're uh, you're 80, 83, Is it eighty three years old? Uh, eighty four. Yeah. Eighty four years uh, old. Yeah. Wow. What a tremendous life, and uh, and and still and still here traveling the world and and not stopping. Um, with with the with the restaurant, Mr. Chow, it's infamous. It's, yeah. It's it's a global brand. Um, and you said you set it up because you wanted to get e- like East meets West. You wanted to unite the different yeah. places, right? Yeah. So. L- so everything great about China, you know. So it's it's a bridging. It's a it's a like a passion to to identity, create an identity for. Uh, so for you 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 opened London in 1968. You then did Beverly Hills, Los Angeles, 1974. New York, 1979. Then you did another one in New York, 2006. Miami, 2009. Vegas, 2016. A uh, possible one here in the Middle East next year. In Riyadh, yeah. In Riyadh, in mm-hmm. Saudi, which is fabulous. Nice. I've had a chance to go to the one in Beverly Hills. It's unbelievable. It lives up to its name. Um, you must have seen the amount of celebrities because it's a spot where everyone wanted to be seen. Yeah, well, I hate people who uh, drop names, you know. Uh, and, La- and Lady Gaga agreed with me. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> There it is. Thank you. You got the we're, joke. We got hold of Can I get the comment? Let me just. Wait. There it is. No, but honestly, when we talk about celebrities, like Mr. Chow was, Mr. Charles is one of the places where they you want to go and be seen. The paparazzi would be out there oh, in Beverly yeah. Hills, like taking the yeah. photos and all that. Can I? I, I we want, now I know Rossi. You, the big one for Rossi, he's the biggest Beatles fan. Oh, my gosh. And he knows what what happened in London. Well, just yeah. in London, you know, in, in, in the late 60s, right? Uh-huh. Uh, all the band went in there, and you still have the table and chairs, right, that the guys sat yeah, on? Yeah, and, and also in, in, in the early days of Mr. Child London, mm. Paul McCarthy was banging the table before... Back to Ru- Russia, you know, to USSR. Oh, that so before re- that, before the release. Oh my God! And also, you know, John, John, uh, John, John. You call him John. We call John, him John, John Lennon. Yes. Yeah. John uh, kind of had l- last supper. One, you know, it was tragic on on the Monday night, and uh, he had dinner at Mr. Chow that uh, on Sunday night. So one of one of yeah. John Lennon's final meals that no, he ever not had. not final meal quite, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's uh, the whole tragedy of that. So Mr. Chan went through all that uh, international, you mm-hmm. know, had the kind of drama, so to speak. Who was the first like big name you can remember that came to to the London restaurant? Or well, any of them? Everybody. I mean, everybody came. You have to take away all the names. I mean, if you if you touch it's 
uh, area, I would name them. So you got to touch an area. Marilyn touch. Monroe, ever? No, never Marilyn Monroe. But on on that note, uh, uh, Marlena Dietrich, Lana Turner, Ava Gardner. Wow. Um, well, all these uh, legends, huh? Um, Ingrid Berman, you know, on the... Uh, women's side and on the male you know, so the list goes on would you mm. and still continue to do so it yeah. still does till yeah. today like all yeah. the celebs that we play their yeah. music everywhere go to go to Mr. Chow mm -hmm. um do you do, would you always make it a personal point to go up to each and every single one of them like it became well, a, a relationship somewhat yeah because i come from a theatrical family and uh, so so the, the the restaurants designed for creative people right whoever sure. created if you are you know so most people you ask them, are you creative? They say they are. So, <laughs> <laughs> all the celebrities come to your restaurants around the world. Mm -hmm. We we mentioned Al Pacino. You're like, oh, he's actually a good friend. Your your list of celebrity friends must be just huge, huge. Well, I know everyone. I'm not necessarily good friends for everybody. Yeah, Too many, you know. So, but uh, yeah, I touch upon all the yeah. So we were talking about. My first movie about Liverpool. Exactly. So yeah. your first, we, we, were, we were explaining that Rossi's from Liverpool, and then it you gets said, "Mentioned so much Liverpool on this show." <laughs> <laughs> just so true. And then you said your first ever movie was 1956. Liverpool. Wow. Directed by Battle Dead and, and with Peter Cushion. I don't know whether you know him. Okay. You know, I don't. I don't. Rossi made Peter Cushion did all the horror movies and oh, Stanley okay. Baker yes. and Haywood and uh, uh, David McCallum. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's about, uh, it's about I don't know, it's about the delinquency, right? So mm -hmm. that's 1956. And since then, I've done 18 movies. And the one movie I just finished yeah. was Paris Hilton, directed by uh, uh, Tony Kay, incredible director, mm -hmm. and uh, starring um, uh, a new, newcomer, okay. you know, Julian Schnabel's son. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, it's called The Train that he wrote the screenplay. It's called The Train. The Train. The Trainer. The Trainer. The trainer. trainer. It's, a, it's a kind of a comedy, dark comedy, but Tony Kay's um, unbelievable. And Paris Hilton and I, we had a scene together about playing poker. And, How was that? Uh, huh? How was it working with Paris? Yeah, great. She's great. Yeah. Know, she's very charismatic and uh, the whole thing, right? Yeah, mm. of course. As you know. Yes, we've met her many times. She's yeah. lovely, lovely. Yeah. I'm sure if, uh, I'm sure she frequently visits Mr. Chow as yeah. well. Yeah, the whole family, you know. The mother comes more often than... <laughs> yeah, do you, have the, do you have the Kardashians come through? Yes, everyone. Everyone, one one time or another, you know. Yeah. And, and your, your spot, especially in Beverly Hills, is it was renowned for having the paparazzi just wait outside yeah. for the celebrities to walk out. Yeah. Did you? I mean, that that's good for business, no? Well, sometimes can be out of hand, but yeah, we went through periods, you know. So we, we, the thing is, Mr. Chow been there so long, over half a century, you know, mm. fifty-four years to be precise, mm. and started from day one, you know, started with Swing London, yeah, which everybody was there, all the Beatles, all the Stone, and the whole thing, you know, mm -hmm. the, the Rolling Stones, Rossi. I love and that. Also, also all the all the Hollywood movie were made there, right? Sammy Davis Jr. and all that. Yeah. Whole crowd, you know, Peter so, Sellers. So when they were filming movies in Mr. Chow, they were using it. Would you have to shut down the restaurant? Yeah. So, well, we Mr. Chow restaurant being in many movies. Yes. Right? As, a, as a you know, so mm. so cool, man. Yeah. Did you ever? Can I? Can I, I've got a few friends that are restaurateurs here in the in the region. Yeah. yeah. What advice do you give to to someone? Because no, you, I have no. I just learn from them. <laughs> <laughs> just no. Oh, okay. One thing I would say. Okay. Especially on this slightly high end restaurant. Restaurants not like a bank. It's like a musical. Interesting. Not like a bank. It's a musical. You got it. It's an experience. You're it, saying no. The whole setup is like a musical. You have the leading man. Mm -hmm. You have the performance, mm -hmm. and you have high and the low, and every moment's entertainment. And if you go through a musical, you have a chance of uh, it to to more exciting. Every night you're looking for the moment of high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you all the cast, all the costumes. Costumes, waiters, costume, mm. and but most restaurants, uh, unfortunately, they treat it like a bank. It's no good, so you have to make it like a, like a musical. So then you go to a different different level. Great advice. Yeah, that is really really great That's advice. Super cool advice. I, yeah. I appreciate that. Was that was good. Now you have a documentary <coughs> coming out in spring with HBO. They've been following you. They're still continuing to follow you. They ask you questions. How is it to film a documentary on your life? Well, I'm just praying because they they touch on you know so much so much. I have so it's two hour documentary and HBO and the Nick Hooker, an incredible director, and Graydon Carter is producing it. You know he's high quality. 
So I have faith in that in them. They'll do you trust good. Them. Yeah, yeah, they'll do you yeah. good. Don't yeah. worry, yeah. Mr. Cho. They'll do you good. Mm. And I pray. Muhammad Ali. Uh, Muhammad Ali. Yeah, I. I um, apart from the restaurant, went to. I went to a party with him, and then, and then a friend, his friend's p- birthday party, and I went invited. I met him there, and then, um, and uh, he's an actor now, now. He's passed away, um, and I happened to. Bought him birthday party a, a chocolate cake and he said, "Wow, you really got a sense of humor." <laughs> so it was very funny. <laughs> so, but um, uh, so yeah, he's like when you see him, it's like wow, like like forget it. Yeah, oh, like, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, love that. Again, Sotheby's Dubai holding an exhibition of Mr. Charles' art. It's uh, who's it, it's it's fantastic what you've been doing. We can't wait to see it. Um, real quickly, you inspired Andy Warhol. He he took photos or created artworks of you, Mr. Chow. No, no, no. I, I didn't necessarily inspire Andy, but um, I lived through that period, the late part of Andy, meaning when Mr. Chow uh, uh, um, in the eighties. So I kind of uh, uh, went. Mr. Chow opened in 1978, mm-hmm. closing of the Studio 54, mm. and at the time. The clothing of Studio 50 is for Ian Traeger gave me a birthday party with, uh, um, and uh, there was no liquor license. There was some problems. Sure. Anyway, so the cl- huge, you know, that's what the end of Studio 54 was the beginning of Mr. Chow, New York. Wow. wow. Yeah. And at that time, for uh, the decade, uh, all the artists, there's like a cafe, you know, it's like a very chic cafe. Yeah. And everybody was there, Jean-Michel Basquiat, Julian Stavo, Andy, and... Uh, uh, all, all the, all the, so that was the art period in New York, you know. You gave them a place to come and hang out. That's, That's what right. you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you gave them a place. What a remarkable life! What a remarkable story! And it continues. He doesn't stop. Eighty-four years old, and he's in the Virgin Radio studios. We are so honoured that you've made your way all the way, obviously, to this region, but also to these very, very cool studios that we have. Uh, we're grateful because you just made them a lot cooler this yes. morning. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us, and you please welcome back anytime. Thank you. 